Um, yeah, so we missed you saying that like it had been a while and you felt a little rustier and a little more startled when the beep went off. Yes. So let's yeah, let's go into the first beep and see. And I was and I was gonna reply to that by saying sometimes when people say they're rusty, it turns out I think they're rusty as well. Mm -hmm. And some when they say they're rusty, I don't think that. And uh, so I'm have an open mind in that in, in that word. It's a lot of a lot of reasons that enter into the self perception of rustiness, I guess is what that Yeah, that's trend. That's actually true. And I also think, sorry, side note, just another, I think that how I perceive, like it, ignoring your your takes and whatever away from every one of these, when, when I think I am happy with how I do or that I got into interesting areas or felt like I articulated my experience well for myself or whatever, it's very dependent on so much other stuff that's happening in my life. Like what if I'm generally just in a good mood or if I'm like swamped with work and too busy or you know what I mean? That just just as personal feedback, I can just tell based on my life sometimes, I think I'll be quite good at it this time or I think I won't be. And I'm yeah, I mean subjectively good for me, but that's just an interesting thing that I've noticed. Because I also apply the same sort of thinking with like when I do in, sit down interviews with people that are very much about their lives on camera and stuff, I can tell if it's not the right time to do that because I'm not in the right space. Sort of, I feel like the same principles apply here. Anyway, that's my opening monologue. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so the first beep went off at 5.42 p.m. yesterday. Um, and I have written... Nothing to note. I was um, very much autopilot laying on my bed and in between actions on my laptop. I was looking at the screen of my laptop, but nothing much happening otherwise. There were no internal thoughts or feelings particularly present. Mm -hmm. So you're in between actions. You were looking at the screen. Um, was looking at the screen, just your eyeballs happened to be pointed at the screen Maybe you were visually processing, but you don't know. Or did that enter your consciousness before the full lights of your consciousness, as we've been saying? I think on this occasion, I, I, I don't think it did. Like, I can't even remember what was on my screen. I haven't written it down. I don't actually think it was particularly in my consciousness. Okay. So it... it could not have been, or it might have been mm -hmm. a tiny bit that you don't remember, but either way, it's not super present to you. Mm -hmm. um, in between actions, mm, does does that figure in so, something about these actions, or is that just context as well? I think that's in context in the way of me um, being like, I, it's, it's not like I was actively thinking about writing this sentence or I wasn't in the process of thinking about doing this thing. I was sort of not doing anything in particular that I could grab at and therefore I felt like that was quite relevant context to my inner experience. Okay. Um, do, you think, um, do you think this was in the shades of nothing category as a, as a nothing or a slightly above nothing, or it's, it's hard to even say. No. Yeah. I think it's definitely in that category. I think it is. Yeah. Slightly above nothing, but pr pretty enough. And as I say that, I think it might be, I don't know if it's risky to talk about categories. We should mm -hmm. probably look at this experience in particular. Um, but, but go on. You're saying. No, I think you're right. Nothing, that based on my own terminology and like whatever I would I would use that word to describe this yeah wait so I so nothing or a bit like a little bit of something or hard to even say I think hard to say now but certainly yeah. like within that ballpark okay um so so here's what I have here mm-hmm you're looking at your laptop, you're between actions, you're on your bed, right? I mean, this is just context, right? Mm -hmm. You're on your bed, 
but there's nothing particularly in your awareness. Um, your your eyes are pointed at the screen, but that might not even be, mm -hmm. you know, like seeing that. Mm -hmm. um, and oh, I do have. Okay, so your your eyes are pointed at your laptop screen as like a fact of reality. You're not particularly focused on anything, or nothing's particularly catching your eye. But you think just basic seeing, like basic kind of seeing of the screen, is it all, all in your awareness or or not? Yeah. Or in yeah. your consciousness? Yeah, it is. Like it's not like I'm sitting there and like physically pointed at it, but not like aware of the fact that I'm looking at a laptop or anything. Like, yes, I am present in my reality, I guess. And that's like okay. it's, what I'm trying to say is it's not like I'm daydreaming per se. Do you know what I mean? Which is probably a whole different kettle of fish but as in yeah I'm locked in with the environment that I'm in it's in my awareness as much as it can be without being like um like what is it what you alluded to it before Julian and like Russ you sometimes say of like yeah you're looking but you're not like I can't remember but when we do the hearing one of like you're listening but you're not hearing or whatever the looking version of that is what I was doing I would say you're looking but not seeing or okay. whatever so looking but not not noticing any particular thing yeah right? not focused on any particular thing yeah but you think some basic seeing thing is conscious or the possibility that it's yeah. not it doesn't even enter your consciousness your inner experience before the footlights no i think it well, does and maybe i maybe i've um contradicted myself at some point there but i think it does but not at any deeper level than that. Okay. Because I, yeah, I was curious because I was going back to the day two transcripts and, and similar kinds of things. Mm. I'm not sure if we made it clear, like, like when I say just, just looking and it somehow enters your consciousness, I, I don't necessarily mean it has to be like focused on any particular thing or anything has to be striking. Um, but I'm, I'm also not sure in this questioning now if I was being too suggestive mm. and and was like, well, your eyeballs are pointed at it. So wasn't it somehow in like in your inner experience? Um, so I don't know if I muddied the waters a little bit, um, but I just wanted to explore that strand. So think? let me, the, I think the waters might be a little bit muddied, but let me, let me explore it in a little bit different way and see whether we can get to it. Mm -hmm. So th there's a lot of stuff going on in your environment. You're laying on your bed. There's the pressure of the mattress on, on or sheets or whatever it is on your backside or side or wherever it is. All that stuff is in the, in the temperature, the temperature, not, not only the pressure, but the temperature of the room or whatever, all the, all that stuff is in some way being processed in your body, mind, how, whatever you want to call that. And the question I think that Julian was trying to get at is, are the, is what's coming in through your eyeballs more conscious, more before the footlights of your consciousness than the rest of all of the rest of that stuff in the welter of your potential experiences? Or is it just the case that all of this stuff is sort of context? I'm not falling on my bed, so I'm processing where it is that I'm in my bed and I'm not putting the sheets over me or whatever because the temp temperatures are okay. But I'm not thinking, oh, the temperature's okay. I don't have to put sheets on. So the question is, mm. is it the case that my eyeballs are processing something before the footlights of my consciousness more than my backside is processing the mattress mm. or is it more or less the same thing? Um, I would say, yes, my eyeballs are processing more than the rest, but still like very minimal. Okay. Like, yes, there's a distinction to be made there, but I, but not a great one. So what I would say is that the, the advantage of asking the questions like that makes the question not so much about the words, mm -hmm. because what you were trying to do, Julian, I think was trying to get the 
trying to get us to be able to parse words and say, well, it's this and it's not that, which I think is difficult. Mm -hmm. And and so has the tendency to muddy the waters. Whereas if you put it into, well, there's there's different aspects. And if I had led if I had led with those with those questions rather than the questions that that that, that focused it in just on the eyeballs, yeah, then I don't I don't know where we would have gotten. I'm, so we yeah. we ended up in the same place as we did with the word questions, but whether that's the result of the word questions or whether that's the result of the experience, I don't think we can tell. What to you is more a word question? Well, and uh, there are a lot of different kinds of word questions, but in, but in this one, it was trying to trying to parse by using words mm-hmm. whether there was some experience, some awareness. So we were going to try to, what we were trying to do was to see whether we could find some shared definition of experience and awareness or something, which would lead us to conclude that there was something before the footlights of consciousness. Or conclude that there wasn't. Or that, or that there wasn't, yeah, right. That there was or wasn't something. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I like what you bringing in these other aspects you know, lying on the bed, feeling the covers, because by just focusing on the, mm. on the looking at the screen, yeah, I don't know why I chose that particular element, maybe because it might've popped out the most, but yeah, to see if that was, or if it wasn't like somehow, not just a fact of context, the mm. thing that was going on, but if it was actually somehow experienced, but yeah, I think by focusing too much on that, as opposed to comparing it to other stuff going on. Yeah, I, I, I like your line of questioning. Right? The, the, adva- the advantage of the comparison is that it, it, tr- it does, I think, as good, a, as, good as, I, as I know how to do anyway, leave out trying to figure out what awareness means and mm. what, what consciousness means and, and all that stuff. And nobody's got any good definition of that. And there's no reason to believe that Mel's definition of awareness is going to be the same as... Julian's mm. definition of awareness, no, no matter how you work at it. Mm. The consciousness scientists have been working at that for, you know, a thousand years or 20 years or whatever, and they can't agree. Mm. All right. But either either way, what I would say is that we're pretty close to the bottom of the weeds here. Is this nothing or next to nothing? Yeah. Don't really know. Mm. Probably, probably it would we would end up with, well, it was either no, nothing or next to nothing, regardless of whether we had asked Julian's line of questioning or my line of questioning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I think that's the limitation of the method mm-hmm. and the limitation of probably all introspection. You can't really mm-hmm. determine a bright line between nothing and next to nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I also, that was interesting what you said, Russ, because sometimes I do find the, um, words like consciousness and like awareness. Sometimes I can find them a little bit overwhelming. Mm. Cause like, yeah. And I think it's to do with what you said of like, I think I know what we all mean when we're saying that, but like, I uh, I hope I think the same thing. Cause so I, I immediately get a bit nervous and overwhelmed when we get really fixated on that terminology, even though I know it's sort of necessary. Yeah. They're, they are difficult, if not impossible words. Yeah. I personally think they're probably impossible, but. <laughs> but we I think I threw out all of them at some point in your experience before the footlights right. consciousness, just because I feel like each of them has some connotation or some way of the, that you'll probably think of it. So. So I was trying to, so, and I, I agree that you did, and I thought that was good, yeah. but but I but I don't think it. I don't. I, so you can you you can put out a constellation, and and you, Julian, would add words until you thought that you've put out a constellation which is adequately ambiguous or adequately multi perspectives. Mm. But whether Mel would have the same set of perspectives 
that's hard to know, probably yeah. impossible to know. Mm. <laughs> and it's better than just saying, so, I, so I, I agree that putting out a whole lot of different aspects is better than just saying, well, is this in your consciousness or not? And just yeah. leaving one word. I agree that it's better than that. Yeah. But, but with limitations. Yeah. Um, okay. Number, number two. So this one went off at 6 p.m. And I've written, um, I could hear mum in the distance. The exact word she was saying, uh, sorry, let me rephrase. I could hear my mum in the distance and I could hear the exact words she was saying, but they were very peripheral. Um, I was looking at my laptop still and I don't recall any distinct thought or feelings. So at the moment of the beep, are you hearing your mom's exact words? Yes. And somehow, so I'm trying to sort through the difference between could hear, hear, peripherally hear, centrally hear. Mm -hmm. So and I think also important context there is she was in a, a room halfway down the house so I guess the words are like quite physically distant. Um, so, but I f feel like that is also sort of how I, yeah, that's relevant to how I then sort of was aware of them. Like I know when I, when the beep went off and then I reflected on what was happening, I know for a fact that I could hear the exact words she was saying. Was it the forefront of my awareness or my consciousness? Absolutely not. But was it definitely part of it? Yes was me looking at my laptop and doing whatever I was doing more in my awareness? Yes. But that was definitely there. And so that's why I've tried to describe that as like this peripheral thing in my awareness. It's definitely in my consciousness, but it's not like it was the main focus. I'm not like locked in, definitely listening to what mum's saying. And, and is mom saying intelligible words in the sense that I'm understanding what she's saying, or is it, I am hearing what my mom's saying. I can hear the words, but I'm not really, I don't even know what she's really talking about. That hasn't penetrated to me. I didn't write the words down because I didn't really feel like it was relevant, but it was exact words. So like say she was saying, what do you want for dinner to my brother or something like it? I definitely knew what she was saying and it was. So you knew. Yeah. These were not just sounds that were forming yeah. words. These were these were words with meaning or whatever. Yeah. But they weren't they weren't central to you. Yeah. Got it. And then I am in some way seeing my keyboard or seeing my screen. I guess. Yeah, it was my screen. Yeah. Is there more to say about that? Um, well, the only other thing I wrote was that it's very much the same as the above. So. I can't even like, I don't think I was doing anything particularly interesting. I was just doing boring work related stuff. Um, so I'm just written that in terms of like, yeah, inner awareness, there wasn't anything particularly conscious beyond the, what we spoke about in the previous beep of taking in the information that I'm looking at in some way, hearing mum in the distance but that's about it. There was definitely nothing meta or nothing. I wasn't like contemplating anything or, you know. So I'm, 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 I'm totally understanding that there's no contemplation going on. There's no secondary channel or whatever you want to call it about this. Mm -hmm. What I haven't yet figured out is whether there's more visual awareness here than there was in the previous B mm -hmm. or whether they're both sort of at the fringes of I'm seeing it, but not really. I would say that. So they're, they're, they're both almost nothing. Is, is that? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. like, um, facts of my reality, but, but from an awareness perspective, like fringes of sort of relevance. Okay. And are you typing at this at this moment? No, I wasn't. So again, I was like in between like actions per se. And I think that that's sort of relevant to 
the inner experience that like I wasn't really in the middle of doing anything. So. Mm -hmm. And when we talked about the first people, I I don't think we ever said anything at all about what was on the screen Mm. as if that was probably hardly even relevant. Mm Mm-hmm. Is that true here too? That that what was on the screen isn't even really relevant. Whether yeah, okay. this is an economics report or or the Australian newscast or or, or the whatever whatever. Yeah, I think for these these both of them, it wasn't super relevant. I wasn't like, I wasn't engaged enough with the contents on the screen for that to feel relevant. So it wouldn't it wouldn't be a good idea to say I was. I was watching the newscast or whatever it is that's on the screen, even though I wasn't really paying attention to it and certainly not thinking about it, but I was, I was engaged with it. It's much less than that. Much less than that. Like, I think, I think I had my emails open or something like I was, I definitely wasn't like watching anything or whatever. There was stuff on my screen, but it wasn't engaging me at that point in time for sure. Okay. And when I've got, and I'm done, unless somebody's going to, else going to, well, or, or Julian has more to say, I, what I've got is I am visually processing, I guess you could say, what was going on on, on the screen, but not in any way that grabs my footlights of consciousness mm. in any strong way. Mm. And at the same time, I am, <clears throat> excuse me, auditorially processing my mother speaking, mm-hmm. and I hear her to be speaking, mm-hmm. and I know what she's saying, but I'm not engaged with that either. Mm. Yeah, um, feels. Oh, sorry, Julian. That feels accurate, but then it feels weird to hear you say that back, doesn't it? Because I'm saying like her words were not super present, but the laptop was not super present, so it's sort of like this weird version of like my actual central experience is still that sort of weeds of nothingness, but there's this sort of stuff happening, but that's still not enough to be the bones of the experience. If that makes any sort of sense. Well, I'm not sure I understood that. What, what I, what I understand so far and, and correct me if I, this understanding is wrong is that there, it, it is both aspects of these are, close to the weeds of nothingness in experience. Yes. Uh, yeah, as in like, but it, it sounded weird to hear you say that back when like there's actual things like I'm looking at a laptop and I can hear something, yet I'm still saying it's this nothingness, but that is true for me. So as long as you so, understand. So, so that's the advantage of the line of questioning that we were talking about er- earlier on. Like right right now, you're processing the couch that you're sitting on and whatever it is that you got in your hands and whatever. That's not in your awareness, in the footlights of your awareness stuff. You're intelligently processing it, skillfully processing it. Mm. But that doesn't mean that it, has it, that it enters into the, at all the foreground of your consciousness. consciousness. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Then yes, where we got to there, and, then, yeah. and that and that and that makes it seem, I guess, less weird because we're we're really, I think, we're processing thousands of things all at one time. We're multiprocessors, mm. and most, most of the time, most of the time, that processing takes place outside of awareness because we don't because the world is okay, sort of. And uh, I don't know if that. And then, so I think that's the thing that maybe that's what's frustrated me this week a little bit or something of like trying to work out then what is relevant or interesting or whatever, interesting is the wrong word, but you know, what's relevant to these descriptions that finds the distinction between that stuff in terms of like, I don't want to bombard you with like, well, here's all these like really mundane things that I guess I was processing if I think, but they weren't like super in my awareness, but then I'm, but if I think about, you know, like I could have recorded this beep and be like, well, there was sort of nothing again, you know? That would have been fine too. If that describes your experience as sort of nothing, I don't think there's a need to, to stretch and make anything more than it is. Mm. 
Um, I think we're both happy to look at if things are on the fringes, even mm -hmm. if we can't be totally sure how on the fringes they are, but, but it's okay also to say that, I don't know, just to describe it how it is. Mm. The is is the challenging part though. <laughs> What I, what I would say about that is that if we get samples mm -hmm. where there is something which is clearly before the footlights of your consciousness, mm -hmm. then we will be able to contrast that with this. Yeah. And if we don't, then we'll have, then then we'll then something else will happen. We'll have to figure that out. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, just one thing about this one. Um, so your mom is speaking it's peripheral it's on the fringes mm -hmm. but it is those exact words and those words have some meaning mm -hmm. is is meaning part of it in some fringe way some understanding or or do you just mean that the words are actual words and not nonsense but you're not you're not uh, attaching any kind of meaning to it in that moment no that's a really interesting question that's i like that um because I know what you mean and no, I was aware that, yeah, she was saying words that have meaning, but I wasn't hearing them and then taking meaning from them. No, okay. I remember thinking that at the time, like I know she distinctively said, what do you want for dinner or whatever it was she said, but I wasn't mm -hmm. then thinking further about that. They still remained as this like peripheral thing. Okay. Yeah. Then I'm clear on the sample. Me too. Number three. All right. Um, this one went off at 6.36 p.m. And I wrote, oh, yeah, um, I just noticed something wrong with the document that I was designing on my laptop. I felt confusion and disappointment, but it wasn't a verbal thought. It was a sensation. I didn't describe my feeling to myself, etc. I was just looking at the screen. And then just before the beep went off, I was overcome with that sort of emotion. I was annoyed. All right, so this confusion, disappointment, annoying, mm -hmm. annoyment, sensation. Um, did did that have a a physical location, or not even physical, or some kind of location? I don't think so. No, it was definitely a clear sensation that I know I felt, but yeah. didn't manifest itself physically. Was so was it? Um, would you say it was in this moment confusion, disappointment, annoyance about something in specific? Like, was it about the thing that was happening, or was it just kind of these sensations, or these kind of emotions themselves? They were reactionary, um, but mm -hmm. but beyond that, it I just feel like, like as in I noticed a I noticed an, a mistake on the. Th document I was designing mm -hmm. that led to these feelings, but were those feelings then like that they were the same confusion, annoyance, whatever, the same way I experienced those any other time. But there was, it was certainly a reactionary thing associated with, mm -hmm. yeah, me discovering this like mistake. Before I ask questions, trying to get specifics based on, I don't know, how I think I might differentiate. Mm -hmm. Is there is there more you could say about these, or more detail you could give about these emotions, like how you how it was at this moment? Um, which exact words did I say? Confusion, disappointment. Um, like definitely negative, <laughs> um, and uh frustration um how do i i don't know how to explain what that feels like mm -hmm. apart from it being a negative thing so it's it's negative and it's you say it's strong at this moment yes so it's strong so we can compare this to the previous beeps with things at the at the fringes. How how would you compare it to almost the, the exact opposite? <laughs> mm -hmm. And so, like, 
So what does it mean for it to be strong at this moment in your experience? That I would say that the stuff that I've described as peripheral or whatever in other beeps, Mm -hmm. there was no awareness of anything else. So this was very much the central focus of my awareness. So I became, anything else became not part of my awareness because I was overcome with this emotion. Um, Yeah. Would you say it's one emotion or would you say it's, different strands of different emotions, maybe some cute confusion, disappointment, annoyance, or all these just ways of describing one one emotion at this moment, or you're not sure? Yeah, I'm, uh, I think that's semantics based on how I experience emotion. Like, I don't, I, I just think that I'm more complex enough to ever be able, more complex than to ever just prescribe one word to my emotions. So that's why I would lob out a few. Um, but it just, it's like a state of being, I suppose. And then I'm just clutching at words that perhaps feel relevant. Um, yeah. Um, knowing that it's not about the words, um, <laughs> is there any particular word you've lobbed out that feels most apt? You know, confusion, disappointment, annoyance, frustration, or is it all part of the kind of constellation? Constellation, but I tell you what, actually, I will say confusion was there initially when I noticed the mistake. Like, so that definitely led things off. It was like, oh, what the hell? And then it was like the more, the stronger negative things of like disappointment, frustration, annoyance, like that sort of stuff. But there was certainly confusion first of like, wait, I've noticed a thing. And then the other emotions sort of unraveled as a, constellation mm-hmm. secondary to that okay w- would you be able to say what kind of the last thing before the beep was uh well well the that that whole process happens very quickly of like from from normal to confusion noticing to then the anger i'm annoyed like that happens you know, like that. So okay. it, that kind of all happened just before the beep went off. Like that whole, that exact moment of noticing, annoyed, angry, but that is a split second. Okay. So no, you notice, is there a bit of context about what this mistake was? Just Yeah. It was yeah. just like, I was um, actually redesigning my personal website. So and just like some formatting of the the design layout was off, and so some spent ages on it, and then it two columns weren't lined up, and I was like, oh, "What the hell? I've just spent ages on that. Why?" And I couldn't work out why it wasn't lining up. It should have been; they were the same size, etc. So it's not lining up. Um, so could you go through again? Um, like the kind of sequence when you say it was first confusion and then this and then that, do you, do you, are you just saying that like things progressed in a sequence, but you're, you're not sure if it was disappointment and then frustration or this or that, or that, or are you saying that this is kind of the exact order or you, so basically you're just saying that it was a kind of a rapid shift, but, but kind of uncertain. No, there's definitely a sequence yeah, to the way it unfolds, but it just, it's, as I said, happened very, very fast, but certainly it's confusion Mm -hmm. and then like annoyance, like like, mm, frustration, like, yeah, I think there's like confusion and then like disappointment slash annoyed and then frustration. I think that sort of, that definitely is how that unfolded in that order, but that happens like that. Mm-hmm. So like, like, yeah, like, um, like from beginning to end, kind of like a flash. You tap out like when it might start and when it might end or something. It's like, quicker than I can it show you. It happened. Oh, so like, 
Like, like one clap gives you the whole thing unfolding. Okay, one clap. <laughs> one clap gives the whole thing unfolding. Is that um, is that? Do you think in the sense like psych like? <laughs> Maybe I don't need to ask that question. I was going to ask if experientially it feels like one clap, but in real life it might take longer. But maybe all we have at this moment is your experience. So. Yeah, it just happened. I really think it does happen really quickly. Like if I stop and reflect on my inner experience, then I can tell you I think I definitely went through that, that, that. But at the time it's – no, I definitely do think it is experienced Mm. relatively instantaneously i'm only yeah. being able to break down the way it unfolded now after the fact but mm. during the fact that all happens so fast that i wouldn't have been able to say like oh and now it's progressed to frustration like that happens so fast so so it's relatively instantaneously but there's still a progression over yep. time yeah is there a progression over time as in a, like a very fast, like, like, like very fast, or is it just, it is instantaneous, but still feels like a progression. Yeah. I'm hearing what you're saying. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fine. The semantics, but yes, the, the other of like really fast progression. Okay. Very fast progression. When you did the noise that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, the the disappointment annoyance is that like disappointment in yourself annoyed at your, or at someone else or is that at so, someone not part of it um i yeah i would say equal parts myself and equal parts this stupid computer why is this not doing what i want it to do <laughs> okay um would you be able to say how any of these emotions changed from one to the next or? In terms of um, severity or like how I felt beyond just using those words. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of mean like if it's confusion and then disappointment, annoyance, is it like first one and then all at once the other, or maybe mm -hmm. confusion like kind of gradually changes and then like disappointment or like, I don't know, those are just two possibilities, but it doesn't have to be that, or maybe you don't know. I think it all happens too fast for me to be able to make too much of a distinction um, okay. beyond sort of what I've said. Like, I think then I risk mm -hmm. dialing in too, too much. Yeah. And as a, as a fact of the universe, your eyeballs are looking at the screen. Mm -hmm. is, is that part of your experience at this moment? Yes, actually, that's something that I've glossed over by being so focused on the emotion that yes, compared to previous beeps, the contents of the laptop is very much part of my awareness. Like I'm, my eyes are physically looking, but I'm like really looking at like, uh, yeah, hang on, why are these lines not lining up? So it's very much part of my awareness. But the emotions mm. are the overwhelming sensation, but they're directly correlated with the contents on my laptop screen. Yeah. So so it's lines that are that are not like or could you describe the lines maybe like are they horizontal or vertical or they're supposed to like there's like up? two columns that had lines like this and they were supposed to be matching columns but okay. the, they were like this okay and i couldn't work out why the formatting was off when the text was the same size um is there a why are the lines not lining up kind of thought or no, or that's kind of part of the confusion or, or is that just ways of describing confusion? Yeah, that's like, that is the source of the confusion, but in t that's not a distinct thought that's happening inside my okay. brain at the time. No. 
it's just the overwhelming feeling of confusion and stuff mm. as a reaction to that on the screen, but I'm not consciously asking myself why are these not lining up. For the looking part, is are you looking specifically at anything, uh, specifically at the lines, or is it a broader taking in of the whole screen? Or? No, at this point I'm like really engaged with just a specific sort of lines that I've described to you, yeah. Okay, so so what I have is you're on your computer looking at your website redesign, mm -hmm. the lines aren't lining up and you're visually focused on that part, the line's not lining up. Mm -hmm. that, that is part of your experience, not mm -hmm. just fringes. Mm -hmm. um, and you also have a strong emotion in that it's, it's very present. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it cycles very quickly through through different aspects of confusion and then a kind of a disappointment annoyance and frustration um and it's negative it's very fast like, like almost instantaneous mm -hmm. basically instantaneous and yeah it's strong negative you're, you're overcome by it um does that, do you think I missed anything or does that? No, I feel okay. like that sums it up. Question so can this. I ask some questions here? The, so I'm, I'm gathering there's sort of two aspects of my experience. There's mm -hmm. the seeing and there's the emotion. Mm -hmm. And does it make sense to ask, as far as my experience is concerned, which of those is more stronger for me, which is more salient? Yes, it does make sense to ask that, and the emotions are definitely stronger. 60, 40, 90, 10, 99, 1. Um, like... The reason I'm hesitating here is because the emotions are just, are just like intrinsically linked to the contents of the laptop. So finding it a little bit hard. Well, that, that's that's what I'm trying to get at, actually. So I understand that the laptop has disappointed you or yes. whatever it is, whatever this emotion is going to be. Yeah. But, the, but my question is something like, mm. at the moment of this particular beep, mm. are you still engaged in a visual mode or is your engagement i'm more feeling whatever the words were confused annoyed whatever like yeah actually it's funny isn't it because now i'm like i can't the the obvious initial response I want to give is the emotions were the really clear thing, but the emotions are actually directly linked with me really taking in the laptop. So I wanted to be like, oh, 70, 30, but actually I think it's probably more like 50, like it's because it's sort of one in the same, isn't it? And, and I'm gathering that the emotions are not experienced bodily. Is that right? No. I don't. I don't feel it in my fists or my heart or my mm. forehead or whatever. No, not on this. Case. And I use the term mental for that, but just because. But by mental, I mean not bodily. Yeah. So this, this emotions are experienced mentally. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And then. I think I think I'm good, but I would I would say I didn't believe any of the stuff about things unfolding as being descriptions of experience. I thought that was context explanation, whatever that was beyond what she could say, and I think she gave quite a few hints as to why that was the case. That it happened at the speed of a hand clap, and we're trying to parse out four or five different phases going through the speed of a hand clap, which I don't think is possible. So I, I, I thought, think that it's fair to say that there was emotion, possibly the same strength or stronger than the, than the visual 
explanation. But I think it. I think it's beyond beyond what we could confidently say. Mel experienced at the moment of the beep to say that there was some mm -hmm. feature of that emotion. Hmm. But you, what, what do you think about that, Mel? Do you think it's a stretch to say that, or do you think that for you, um, for you, there is some some of these distinctions you can make? Yeah, I feel I definitely feel like it's it's getting dangerously difficult, but I do think that I stand by being able to differentiate the confusion and then the negatives. So I think there, I, I'm satisfied with some element of what we discussed, Julian, of like, I think there is a distinction there, but then, yeah, once you get into like trying to nail down how fast that happens or like, yeah, exactly. I think that's when it gets muddy, but there was a distinction that could be made and I think it happens about this fast. I think that you can take. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm kind of surprised you say that, Russ, because in some of your samples with other people, there are all kinds of different elements at once. Or I think I also remember some samples of like really fast cycles of emotions, maybe research on depression. But um, well, I'd be happy to take a look at those with you if you want to figure out one. Here, um, this one, I, I just, it was, it was too fast. And I thought, I thought that the, I thought that the ability, I, it, it is no doubt true that the emotion cycles from confusion to annoyance. I'm guessing that's really true. Whether that's in Mel's experience is another story. Mm -hmm. And whether that's in her experience at the moment of this beep is another story. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, it would depend on how, how that's characterized as whether I would, you know, it's in the weeds, I would say, between mm -hmm. Somewhere in here, there was probably annoyance, and there was probably confusion, and there was probably emotion. But, but to try to to try to get at with some sequence, I think, is Mel's self theory, not direct experience at the moment of the beep. Mm -hmm. So, Mel, do you do you think like we could say that there's confusion, then there's a bunch of other negatives, maybe some frustration, disappointment. So, so what do you think we could say about your experience, Mel, that there is kind of, it's not static, there is kind of a, sh a shift, like a, like it's changing, these negative emotions? Do you, do you think we can say that at least? But it, it I, it happens so fast that mm. that's my hesitation, that beyond mm. sort of what I've been able to say, of like, I think there's a distinction between confusion and that, then like I don't I don't necessarily see it as this like um, it, it's not easy to describe this changing state or it's not like clearly it get feels muddy, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm hesitant to unpack that too much because it just feels like how it feels. It's, it would be different if, you know, over the course of 10 minutes I went through all these different feelings that I, you could clearly grab at. This happened so quickly and we're talking about a bunch of emotions that are fairly similar, so I have mm -hmm. reservations okay. about getting too specific. But you, you did seem more, more confident that confusion started it and that other things unfolded? Yeah. Would you... And, and Russ, would you kind of agree to that, or would you say that even that is might be too risky to? I think that uh, the, there's nothing that Mel could say at this particular moment, this far down the road, about this particular sample, for me to think that at the moment of this beep, there was an experience that started as confusion and became something else 
became an annoyance or whatever. And that was captured at the moment of the beep. Mm-hmm. And, and that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that that experience doesn't happen that way. Mm-hmm. It may very well happen that way. I just don't think we have any evidence from DES about that. And, and I would like us to keep separate what we have evidence that we can point to and say, well, this is, this is why we think that. And, and my evaluation of this, and that goes beyond what we can say that there's more like, or it is likely, it is possible, likely, whatever, I don't know, that the ex, the explanation, the self theory about how it happens is at least as important as the experience at the moment of the beep. And that's not a criticism of Mel. That's, that's, Yeah. Mm. What I what I wouldn't want us to be doing would be to get at the end and we say, look what we found here. We did a DES beep and we found a sequence of first confusion and then annoyance and then, which mm. I just don't think we have the warrant to say. Mm-hmm. I think we have the warrant. I think we do have warrant to say I mean, she was annoyed, confused, whatever. And at the moment of this particular beep. Mm-hmm. And that that was mental rather than bodily. I think mm-hmm. we have warrant for that. I would I would go to the mat about those. That, that, but about whether we have whether we can parse something more finer than that. I just have my doubts about it. Mm-hmm. I, I would say a little bit more, and that I think we do have. We do see something that's not static. It's not just one thing. It is there. It doesn't change. I think Mel was confident that there was this this kind of shifting part of it, like a a change. Evolution. Let's say it evolved. And I'm curious also because, like, I'm not, like, combating your doubts. Sometimes, you know, during the interview, I was like, can we really distinguish, you know, so fast four different emotions? But um, yeah, Mel, you you didn't seem so hesitant about it. Like there there wasn't so much subjunctification as we say in DS, like filler words or um I don't know. Like um, you you seem pretty confident. But so so Russ, what makes you think? I mean, what 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 made you so skeptical? Well, we, it, we, if if we wanted to, we could rewind the tape, and I could and I could say why my context detectors, my self theory detectors, jangled at this point and not that point, or whatever. You probably will at some point. And uh, I don't think I, I don't think I can I can do it. I could say that without going back and look. And and I don't mean to imply that my context detectors are 100% accurate. I don't think they are. Mm-hmm. I, I think, I guess I think the science is best served, the understanding is best served, the, the interpersonal relationship between me and Mel, I think are best served by being a little conservative which is to say, I'm, I, I don't want us to engage in sort of a, what I would call a collusive over-articulation because mm-hmm. sooner or later, Mel is going to know, well, we were engaged in that collusive over-interpolation there, and then she's not going to trust me or you or anybody else after that. And uh, so I think it's better to be a little foot draggy uh, okay because I, I think I think Mel well I, I think that's how you how you how one establishes credibility I guess mm-hmm. it's interesting that you talk of being skeptical as like enhancing trust absolutely yeah. skepticism is enhancing trust 100 percent. And that's almost always thought of backwards from that in the rest of psychology. Mm -hmm. And the, Mm -hmm. and the, and the, and the reason for that is that most people, when they use skeptical, they mean, I don't believe you, but I'm not going to tell you. 
Mm. That means when most people use the word skeptical, they're lying to you to your face. And when I use skeptical, I'm saying, I'd like to know, but I don't. And I'm trying, I'm trying my best to get at what, what you got. And I'm trying to be honest with you about why it is that I doubt what it is that you're saying. And I think that is the heart of mm. trust and But it, but it, but it's not the it's not the heart of psychology, I don't think, or philosophy, or whatever. Mm. All right. Interesting. Mm. Um, Number four. Number four. Yeah, I've got this went off at seven fifty p.m. I was literally mid yelling the phrase why is that doing that as the beep went off um right before it i felt frustration at noticing another problem on my design uh similar to the above it was an immediate visceral response i saw i reacted etc there was no meta thought about it so let's focus on this beep first so there is a this is yelling yes and and that could be understood as a fact of the universe i'm yelling and it could be understood as a fact of experience i i experience myself as yelling mm -hmm. why is it doing that mm -hmm. so is this a is this an experiential thing or just something that's coming out of your mouth and the and the 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 distinction I'm trying to make there is, you know, you just adjusted your glasses and that came out of your hand, but you mm. probably didn't even notice that you adjusted your glasses. Mm. It, it comes out of you. And the question is whether the yelling is just coming out of you or whether you, this is an experience process. I don't know. I'm, because I can appreciate that I do that and don't notice. But like, I find the same, I'm, I'm not, I struggle, struggle with the same distinction for the yelling. So is, is that to say, well, I experienced myself as yelling. There's no possible way that I could yell and not experience myself as yelling. I think Which so. Which is fine with me. I'm not, I'm, I, I, I I just wanted to give you the opportunity of saying, you know, now that I think about it, there was really no experience there. But yeah, but that's not what you're saying. I'm I'm experiencing. I'm understanding you to be saying, well, I was experiencing yelling. Yeah, yeah. I think I. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, I was. Okay. And at the same time, I am feeling of what you call a visceral response that is something like frustration. Mm-hmm. And I would like to know whether this is a bodily thing or a mental thing or both. I feel like this compared to the previous beep, this did feel a little more bodily. I would say because the frustration was getting more intense. Um, so I think like, which is relevant to like the yelling. And so I feel like this was felt bodily a bit at this point. There's a bit of this happening. And, and <clears throat> what is that that you're describing? Um, a tensing, I suppose. Um, whether at the moment of the beep I had physically tensed my fists yet, I don't think so. But, like, I think there was tensing throughout the act of yelling. There was definitely, yeah, like a bodily release related to the frustration that wasn't present in the beep prior as well. So am I feeling bodily tense tension at the moment of the beep or am I surmising that since I'm yelling, it must be tense? Mm, good question. No, I think, no, I think there was, it was experienced, but it's not like the main part of my experience. Like the mental frustration is definitely the main part, but I think there was a bodily experience of it. Okay. And, and in the, in the bodily portion of it mm -hmm. is, is there a portion of the body that is involved? This is my shoulders, chest, fists, legs, none of the above, all of the above, 
can't tell. Mm, yeah, I think I'm I'm going to be hypothesizing if I give you anything there. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I'm specifically noticing my upper body to be tense, but it does seem like I'm somehow noticing the bodily aspect of this. Yeah, that fair? That, yeah, mm -hmm. that like particularly compared to the previous beep, like there's a bodily element here that wasn't there. Yeah. So that sentence, what you just uttered, mm -hmm. could be taken as a, a mere physical explanation. There was a bodily thing present that wasn't there before. And the reason for that is, well, I'm yelling now and I wasn't yelling before. Mm -hmm. Or it could be taken as, well, I'm experiencing something bodily. Or I'm just not sure about this. Maybe it's just that Russ is asking me stuff that is not that I'm not capable of differentiating. Um, and I didn't mean capable as being no, I know. Um, know, some judgmental thing. <laughs> no, I didn't interpret it that way. Um, no, I'm just trying to remember. Um, no, there, were, there was... <clears throat> because in the act of yelling, there was a physical sensation as well <clears throat> sorry um so like i'm looking at my laptop and, and i said you know whatever i said of like why is that doing that or whatever so i there is this my body has sort of tensed up or yeah i, I think tense stuff is sort of a right description that with the yelling there's a physical element that's not just my voice but where that is felt is sort of you know it's just felt it's not specifically my hands tensed and I know that happened or I felt that it's not that but there was a bodily tensing as I yelled and the I would say that feeling of frustration that was mental was also felt in a bodily somewhat physical way yeah, yeah. And and the feeling, how is that the same or different from the feeling of the previous beep? Because by this point, it it the com, that the confusion part was far less, and this was really a just built up frustration due to the repetition of annoying issues. Um, so like, whereas earlier it was like, oh, why? Like there was a confusion and then there was like, this is annoying and this is frustrating, this is disappointing. I think by this beep, that first half is not happening. Even though that happens really quick, that was not present at all here. This is just anger, frustration, just. Mm -hmm. Um. And I would, I would also say, yeah, it's felt with more intensity, which is, okay. yeah, I mean, I'm going to hypothesize, but I was going to say that's also why I think there was the physical element. And, and what exactly were you yelling? Why is that doing that? <laughs> and and is, are you confident that those are the exact words? Yeah, I've written down that exact phrase. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and, and are those words in salient to you or is that just sort of an expression of what the fuck? Uh, how, um, what do you mean? I guess what I'm trying to get at is whether this, whether this is a, semantically meaningful question why is it doing that or mm -hmm. whether this is a an expression of frustration where the words don't really matter i don't want an answer to this question i want to i want to express annoyance no i think i want an answer to this question i think the phrase would have been worse if i just wanted to express frustration so this is a frustrated question I am looking at my laptop, looking at the specific things that are annoying me, going, why is that doing that? 
Um, so in a way it's a, it's a question to myself and the universe rather than a pissed off release. <clears throat> and, and five seconds ago, you said, why is that doing that? Is that what you mean by yelling or, or was yelling louder, more intense, whatever than that? <laughs> True. I guess. Yeah. I wasn't like screaming to the hills. It was probably a bit louder than what I just did, but it's not. Yeah. Put in the ballpark of put in the ballpark of that. But yeah, exactly. Like my mum would have heard it down the hallway in the kitchen, but the next door neighbours definitely did not hear it. <laughs> okay. All right. Then I think I'm good. Um. That at some point there was some mention of like the a release of this tension with the yelling, but I, that was just mentioned once, or maybe I misheard it. Um. Was that part of it or not? Yeah, sorry. I think I mean the um, more like um, the emotion manifesting itself physically is probably a better description rather than like release. I think maybe I led you up a garden path by saying release there. I would say it's... Okay. So the yelling is the physical, you know, the motion com coming out or... But it's not like the it's not like tension like lessons or, or no it's not like tension lessons at all if anything it's quite the opposite um the emotion is felt more intensely because that emotion is now now has a bodily aspect to it that is not it's not release it's continued if that makes any sense when you say like quite the opposite, like, do you think that, like there's a, a change over this moment of some kind with your emotions? No, at the, at the moment of the beep, this was just very clearly just like, yeah, the only like, a word that I wrote down really that describes the emotional state was frustration. So this was very intensely that feeling and that, yeah, as I said before, there wasn't like, yeah, some element of confusion or then like this, this was frustration. But I, I mean, changes in like this frustration increasing over this moment or something or. No, I don't think so. Um, and you, so you're, you're yelling, why is that doing that in, that is experiential. It's not just, you know, something that's happening. Um, is that about hearing it or vocally producing it or like a mix of both? Um, I wouldn't say like vocally producing it is necessarily in my awareness and say more hearing it is in my awareness like vocally producing it is just a fact rather than anything I've experienced per se. Mm -hmm. Between the, the yelling and this frustration, anger, um, feeling, which, uh, would you be able to give percentages to, to how present they are in your experience? Well, again, I feel like it's same with the earlier one. This They're intrinsically linked. So actually when I want to say one is experienced more than the other, I think it's also intertwined because it was reactionary. Um, so like I'm, I'm f mentally feeling that emotion, which is leading to the yelling. And so I find it hard to differentiate. Mm -hmm. Because it's sort so of all experienced as one, one, one thing, and it doesn't even make sense to say there is this yelling part, yeah, and there is this frustration part. Like there is, yeah, there it's some. it's all a package at that moment. Okay, um, I'm good on questions. Me too. We are an hour and nine minutes into this, according to. Mm -hmm. Do we want to say that's enough for today and come back sometime later? Um, and, and by that, I, 
Absolutely, I'm quite, I'm quite exhausted. Yeah, it's late for you as well, Julie, and so let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> so should we pick a date and? Uh, I'm willing. Or do we want to do it? Or do we want to do even that by email? No, it is easier when we tend to do it now. But I just realized I don't have my diary with me in this room. Um, but I should be pretty flexible next week, so I can work around you guys basically if you have a preference. We do same time, and then I'm free any day next week. So the same, the next week, a week from today would be February 19th, Monday, February 19th. Yeah, it would be. Which I can do. Or our 19th and Mel's. Wait, 20th. What, what, whatever is a week from today. Same time, same station. Does that work for everybody? Yes, for me, yes. Are you sure, Julian? It felt like there was hesitation. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm just tired. Um, <laughs> for me, yes. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can do that. Let me just triple confirm when I get my calendar in the other room eventually. But yeah, I'm sure that's fine. Okay. So right. same time, same place next week. Okay, let's let's pencil pencil that in. And if anybody changes their mind for whatever reason, yeah, then we'll change it. 